our lunar eclipse. This was a photograph taken by museum guide Matt, Matt Ventmiglia. This is a, a, a photograph that where the shutter is open and then closed and then wait a bunch of minutes and then open and close and watch the moon march across the sky and go into eclipse and come out of eclipse. And uh, there will be an eclipse here visible from Griffith Observatory. Uh, that's what the moon looks like up close. And you can see our little logo on the lower right. That's because if you can't make it up here, and it may be possible that you can't make it up here, you can always go outside and look up, for starters. <laughs> it's really easy to see, and you should. Uh, or if you are just really love your computer, you can sit in front of the, your computer and watch it on our live stream feed, <laughs> which is, um, uh, uh, find the link uh, on our website. Um, this is what happens when you get a lunar eclipse. The Earth passes between the sun and moon. And the Earth casts a shadow. The, you know, the Earth is an object in bright daylight, and full sunshine, except on the backside where it's dark because it's night. And the Earth continues to cast a shadow on into space. And when the moon passes in that shadow, it gets dark. And so that's the basic geometry of a lunar eclipse. That's what's going to be happening on the 27th. Here's some picture of some people watching one from Griffith Observatory, you know, at the Hollywood sign. Um, and this is the timing for the one on September 27th. Now, the eclipse begins before the moon actually rises. And so the moon will rise around 639, 640, 645, somewhere there. That's going to be kind of the fun, is when will we first be able to see the moon? We'll make kind of a game out of that. Mm -hmm. And then it goes into totality around 710, 711, and comes out of totality around 823. So it's about a little over an hour at, that it's in that total copper phase. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. So here's this little diagram uh, showing what we expect from the um, position of the moon as it rises. And so here it's rising in the east, and it will rise right above. This is an actual picture of our skyline, as seen from Griffith Observatory, right above this little mountain. So it's hard to really know exactly when it's going to come up, but it'll come up somewhere uh, around uh, 642, plus or minus three minutes. And, uh, and it will already be in uh, eclipse. And then as it goes into totality, it'll be rising even higher and then come out of totality as it gets higher in the sky. So most of the action is going to be on the east side of the observatory, which is good because our lawn was on the west side is, has big fence around it. So mm -hmm. that would be bad if it were in the west. Um, and that is going to stick around. We're redoing our lawn, as you've probably noticed. So anyway, what is this doing here, you ask? Well, we have a fun partnership going, this uh, particular lunar eclipse, with the LA Phil, who, courtesy of Steinway and Sons, is bringing up a grand piano. And it's to celebrate the LA Phil's fall season. They're doing this wonderful Beethoven festival. So this is kind of a promotional thing to have this very young 13-year-old prodigy from Colburn School uh, playing Moonlight Sonata and several other uh, of other pieces as well. So we'll have live piano music on the lawn, which will be a little different than um, some of our other uh, uh, eclipses. Down the hill at the Greek that very same night is a big reggae concert. <laughs> so depending on where you stand, you'll be hearing uh, one or the other, or perhaps both. Um, hard to know. But uh, that should be fun, and I think we should try to blast them out for something a little different. Uh, so you may Which want to come up. What? Which way will the wind blow? <laughs> 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 uh, I don't think so. And actually, this is a good time to mention. The traffic is going to be sheer hell. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. Uh, and so if you really, really want to come, because you love Beethoven, and you love the moon, and a couple other things, um, come during the day. It's a Sunday. Come early. Go take a nice hike around the park and come down at sunset uh, so that you're already up here and you won't be battling. Both the Greek, uh, the Greek concert starts early. It starts at 5.30. Our event is at 6.30. So um, it's going to be just a, a, a traffic nightmare. So that's not to discourage you not to come, but to encourage you 
bring a picnic, waste the hours away, <laughs> and we'll also have a star party, actually telescopes on the lawn, lawn starting at 12, uh, 2 o'clock, so you can look at the sun through a solar telescope and look at if you're thinking about maybe getting a telescope this winter uh, at holiday time, see different people's telescopes and so forth. So there's a lot going on, let me encourage you. I, I have no doubt that the Hill will be completely closed by the time this event actually starts. So that idea of like, oh, let's just buzz up, we'll, you will be so sorry that you did. And uh, so it's, it's not that I don't want you to come. It's just I'm trying to spare you pain. So uh, this is actually a movie of uh, the three prior eclipses of the Tetrad. And by Tetrad, I mean that we've had four total lunar eclipses in a row. When the moon goes into the shadow and into eclipse, it turns this orange color because the Earth's atmosphere is filtering out most of the light, but the red, like red sunset, gets through the Earth's atmosphere and is focused on the moon. So many people have made the comment that it looks like blood red, and now that makes it sound scary, so let's call it a blood moon. <laughs> and now there are four of them uh, in a row, and so um, that's gotta be super scary. And in fact, I'm sure you'll see more and more of this uh, as you get closer to, um, to the actual 27th of uh, the prophecy of doom of the fourth blood moon. Um, so you heard it here first. These are um, movies of the three previous ones, as I mentioned, that we took with our own telescope and we'll be adding the fourth one uh, when we um, do it live. I, I just noticed this. I, I hadn't before, but you can actually see the different diameters of the moon because some of them were when the moon was far away and others when the, when the moon was at its closest and the upcoming one will be a close it'll be the same day it'll be a super moon it'll I be didn't a want super to say moon it, <laughs> so super moon blood moon all at the same time oh my god we're doomed it's definitely <laughs> end uh, and uh, and you can see this is our first broadcast our second broadcast by the third broadcast we'd learn to put our bug on it <laughs> Because, uh, in fact, it does get picked up, and uh, NASA uses our feed. A lot of people use our feed. So, oh, so, so the guiding got better. The it, guiding it got a lot. I know. There's a lot, <laughs> actually, to see in this, not to, least of which is how long the totality is, what the color is. There's a lot of really interesting physics, but really, let's we'll just focus on the, the uh, scary parts instead, because, you know, yeah. science, whatever. Uh, anyway. It's a um, month from Halloween. Yeah, exactly. Almost. There, it actually does make a difference. Whatever the Earth's atmosphere composition is will, will make the, the moon look a different color. It can even look kind of a blue color if you've got a lot of thick dust in the atmosphere. One time there was one practically black. Um, yeah. And so uh, actually kind of one of the big mysteries, what color will this year's uh, blood moon be? Will it be bloody? Well, um, of course, there is a prophecy, so there is a whole story behind it, and, um, and yeah. That's not going to happen. <laughs> I'm going to make that prediction right here and now. This happens all the time. Uh, eclipses happen all the time. Tetrads happen all the time. They're um, rare, but, the, but yeah. there is actually another series in the 2020s. So yeah. The, and, yeah, and for millennia, they have happened. So, uh, what? If it doesn't happen this time, it will happen. Before. Yeah, exactly. There is always a good reason to believe in the end of the world. So um, when, when the moon is on the other side of the Earth, uh, you know, so accompanying every lunar eclipse is also a solar eclipse. Um, this year's, and it's this geometry, where the moon is between the sun and the Earth, and the moon casts a shadow on one very specific point. Remember, before, when the moon was on this side of the Earth, it, the whole thing went into shadow. That's why the whole thing turns red. But because the moon is smaller than the sun, and this is not to scale, but nonetheless, it focuses a small little beam, uh, a little point of shadow on Earth that travels as um, the Earth spins and the moon moves. And it's kind of crazy that the diameter, the angular size and diameter of the sun is exactly 400 times larger than the moon, and it's also 400 times farther away. So they're perfectly lined up. And this hasn't always been the case. The moon used to be closer and it's getting farther away. So millennia from now, you won't ever get any more total solar eclipses. So this is the time we're the lucky people who get to see it. And that's the whole reason I'm telling this story now. The partial solar eclipse that will happen uh, in September 
is only visible in the very uh, tip of Africa, South Africa, and Antarctica. Um, and, and, uh, but we did have one here partial in Los Angeles uh, not long ago. I think it was two years ago. Yeah, also 20, associated, 2012. Yeah. 2012. Yeah. Also associated with the blood moon. Mm -hmm. And we had a little celebration here on the lawn and we had a little music group. And so I wanted to mention this because we have a video of it in the video break, uh, which you will see and hope you enjoy. And let me just say for the record, I, I believe the LA Phil will do better. <laughs> um, so, uh, this next part is just to entice you that a solar eclipse, a total solar eclipse, is something you absolutely, absolutely want to see in your life. And if you have come to the show before and seen me yell at you about this before, it is that you must, must, must start making plans. Put your pennies in the piggy bank, do whatever you need to do so that you will be able to see a total solar eclipse. It is one of the most gorgeous sights you will ever see. Take your breath away, beautiful. What's the next one for the west coast of the US? This, what a perfect lead in. Uh, August 21st, 2017, uh, and it's a total eclipse, not a partial. If you've seen a partial and you think you might have seen a solar, you haven't seen a solar, you absolutely will know if you've ever seen a total solar eclipse. These guys look to me. If you think you've seen a total solar eclipse, but you're not sure, you haven't. If you have seen a total solar eclipse, you will never forget it. Uh, so I just urge you to go online. This is the path of totality. Remember that tiny little shadow um, travels across the uh, Earth? And this one is coming across the United States, so everyone can get there. So I hope you'll do it. Oh, when's the next one? Actually, there's another one seven years later. In the United States? Yeah, it also crosses a big part. We've been a long time without one, but we have, yeah. we have another one coming up wow. in 2024. Yeah, fantastic. Um, just one thing, too. People think, well, solar eclipse isn't that dangerous. Well, the partial phases, you have to be careful. But during totality, the blinding part of the sun is totally behind the moon. Yeah. So you can look at the corona, you can look at the prominences, you can look at the dark sky and the stars coming out. Yeah, I'll just go minutes, back to show you, you know, yeah. that's very much what this, <laughs> and it is the blackest black you'll ever see. It is the darkest thing I've ever seen in my life, it is the place where the sun should be, but is covered up. It's, it's just a fantastic sight.